Welcome to this worked membrane problem. In this particular example, a batch process is used to concentrate up uh, 50 cubic meters per day of an organic solution from 1 weight percent to 10 weight percent. Uh, the modules uh, operate in parallel uh, with a stage cut of 10 percent and the feed flow to each one is 11.3 cubic meters per hour. The transmembrane pressure drop is 30 bar uh, at that specified flow rate and the actual pressure drop is uh, 1 bar. The process only operates for 20 hours each day and the membrane rejects 100% of the solute. For the feed and bleed mode we'll say that the external, fleed, uh, the external bleed flow rate is the same as the permeate flow rate. So here is that data summarized uh, as a set of dot points. The questions that we're asked to answer is firstly how many modules are required and if we operate the system in a recycle mode, what's the power requirement and operating for 20 hours a day, what is the total energy requirement? And secondly, if we operate in a feed and bleed mode, uh, what is the power requirement and the energy requirement uh, over those 20 hours of the day? So let's have a look. Here is our uh, system. So we have our, our feed coming in here. We're going to say that we load the 50 cubic meters in there at the beginning and we pass it through the high pressure pump and into our membranes. Uh, the solvent or the, the permeate comes out down here and uh, the retentate is recycled. We're only really looking at the mass balance here so we, we won't worry about doing any calculations with the heat exchanger at this point in time. So for our for our system, let's have a look at the analysis. We are going from one weight percent to 10 weight percent. So that's a, a 10 times concentration. So what that means is for our 50 cubic meters of feed, that will be concentrated up until it has a volume which is 10 times smaller. So we have five cubic meters of retentate. And by simple mass balance, that means that our permeate equals 45 cubic meters. Now, if we consider that permeate as having come through a membrane, then if we look at it like this, where this is our, our membrane, this is our feed, our retentate, and our permeate, if that permeate is 45 cubic meters in a 20 hour day, at a 10% stage cut, then that means that we must have fed here as feed an amount equal to 45 cubic meters divided by 10% or 0 0.1. So our feed is 450 cubic meters per day keeping in mind that that day is 20 hours long. So the number of modules that we need is then given by this. It's our feed flow, which is 450 cubic meters per day, multiplied by uh, one day, which is 20 hours long divided by the flow rate to each module, which we were told in the problem statement was 11.3 cubic meters per hour. So we've got on the top in the numerator uh, cubic meters per hour and in the denominator cubic meters per hour. And if we crunch those numbers, we end up with a value of 1.99. So that's effectively two modules. Now that answers the first part of our problem. The second question was how much power is consumed by the pump? So just remember, we're talking about this feed pump here. So this is actually providing that 450 cubic meters per day of feed to our two membranes, and it's providing it at 30 bar. So the way that we calculate that is just the power is equal to our feed flow rate times by the applied pressure. Now it's important to use the right units, so our feed flow rate, one consistent set of units is to have our feed flow rate in cubic meters uh, per second, 
and the applied pressure in newtons per meter squared or pascal. So that in effect is 450 cubic meters per day. Our feed flow rate multiplied by one day per 20 hours multiplied by one hour which is 3,600 3, seconds. So this is our flow rate in meters cubed per second multiplied by our, our pressure, our applied pressure, which is 30 by 10 to the 5 pascal. So this will give us uh, an answer in watts or joules per second. And if we multiply that up to a, an easier set of units, we end up with 18.75 kilowatts. And the question is how much energy is that over 20 hours? So that's just that amount times by 20, which comes out to be 375 kilowatt hours per 20 hour day. So that is the answer to our first problem statement. So if we then move on to look at feed and bleed mode, we have a different configuration now. So now instead of just having all of the retentate uh, recycled back to through a back pressure valve, drop down in pressure and back to our feed tank, we now have uh, a second pump which is our internal recycle and what this means is that most of it can be recycled uh, and only using this pump to take the pressure up to overcome the pressure drop along the axial direction of the of the modules which is one bar in this particular problem. So for our analysis uh, we, we consider what the uh, the permeate is again. So again, we from a total mass balance, we know that this this solvent, this permeate product down here, must equal 45 cubic meters per per day. So if we work that out as a, an hourly flow rate, our permeate is equal to 45 cubic meters per day times by one day which in this case is 20 hours and that gives us 22.5 cubic meters per hour. Now this is again keeping in mind uh, our 10% stage cut that corresponds to 10% of the feed that actually went onto our onto our membranes. So a feed to the membranes is then equal to 10 times that. Sorry, that was that was 2.25. And our feed to the membranes is 22.5 cubic meters per hour. And so again, the number of modules is equal to 22.5 cubic meters per hour divided by 11.3 cubic meters per hour which is basically equal to 2. Now we were told that we could assume this external recycle or external bleed so if we consider this to be our recycle system here then this becomes the bleed from the recycle. So if we say that that external bleed is equal to the actual flow rate of the permeate coming out here, then we can, we can assume that the external is also equal to 2.25 cubic meters per hour, which is the same as this amount up here. So then if we if we look at our system, we now know that this amount here, the bleed, is equal to 2.25 cubic meters per hour, that this flow rate here is 2.25 
cubic meters per hour. And so we know uh, that what must be provided to them, uh, we can work out basically what is this internal uh, recycle. So we know that our feed is 22.5, this, this feed here. And so the internal, just by mass balance, is equal to 22.5, feed to, to, to here, this feed here, 22.5, minus 2.25, which was our bleed, minus 2.25, which was our permeate. And all of these are in meters cubed per hour. And so our internal recycle must be 18 cubic meters per hour. So the power consumption for this pump here, our internal recycle pump, is just equal to that flow rate, 18 cubic meters per hour times by one hour over 3,600 seconds. Uh, times by the pressure. So the axial pressure drop, so we're now not looking at the transmembrane pressure drop, but the axial pressure drop uh, was just one bar. So that's one by 10 to the five pascal. And so that is equal to 500 watts. We consider the flow rate going through this junction here to work out what the uh, flow rate is through this high pressure pump. So we know that the total feed to the membrane, so we can draw this here, we can say here's our pump, our high pressure pump. This is our internal recycle, which we know is 18 cubic meters per hour. This is the feed to the membrane which is 22.5 cubic meters per hour. So we can calculate what this feed to the membrane pump, to the pump is just uh, 22.5 minus 18. So it's equal to 4.5 cubic meters per hour. And so the power to that pump is equal to 4.5 cubic meters per hour times by one hour, 3,600 seconds, times by 30, by 10 to the five pascal, and that is equal to uh, 3,750 watts, or 3.75 kilowatts. And so our total power, is the sum of the two pumps, so that's uh, 3.75 plus 0.5, so it's 4.25 kilowatts, and our total energy is that times by 20 hours per day, uh, which is 85 kilowatt hours per 20 hour day.